Hello everybody, Waffle Time here. Have you ever been playing Terraria, having a perfectly peaceful and serene experience, dare I say, even enjoying yourself, then suddenly thought, hmm, I'm having a lot of fun right now, what would ruin my evening and take away any shred of wanting to live I have left? If your answer to that burning question was, make everything in the world a paradise for bees that want to live in your skin, then boy do I have the premise for you. Today, we will be completing the Not the Bees Seed in Terraria. By completing, I mean taking ourselves on a spiritual journey of entirely dissipating any sense of hope or joy we have ever experienced in our entire lives. Now, if you don't know what Not the Bees Seed is, it's an experience that makes your entire world honey, honey blocks, hive, jungle, and an overall bee and hornet infested wasteland, which no one in their right and stable mind would ever want to do let alone on master mode, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. So buckle up, fellas, because daddy's going to be spoon-feeding you some testosterone and soul-crushing content that he created. We spawn into our world and see that the world is, in fact, the worst amalgamation of all the things in Terraria. Excellent. This is going to be our entire playthrough. Excellent. As you can see, we're surrounded by Honey, Jungle, and a merchant who's going through a midlife crisis and wants to start an 80s cover band with his two friends, Jeff and Ron, who aren't really on board but want to support their old friend because they know he's going through a tough time with his wife. What is the first thing we should do upon entry to a new world? Chop some trees, perhaps even make a house out of it. This honey serves as a tremendous inconvenience because no matter where I go, I am stuck and fucked, or as I like to call it, step road. The merchant and I are immediately bukkake to death and sent to the seventh circle of hell by jungle slimes. Twice! I managed to make a pathetic little safety box so that I don't spontaneously combust just from being outside and work my way up into what our NPCs will call home. It's the very start of the video, but you can already tell how the entirety of the rest of the video is gonna go by me dying over and over and over and over again before making a pathetic inkling of progress on this crib. Oh no no, it doesn't end there. I die several more times. I want to be done. I would like this to be finished, but we've just started. I'm beginning to feel entirely numb. I'm spending more time watching the death counter screen than I am actually playing this fucking game. How in God's name do we progress at a time like this? Ah yes, a elevator. What could go wrong with a sexy little elevator to speed up our game progression? Oh, honey would slow us down? Tiny hornets that climb into my eyes slow us down as well? Well who would have goddamn guessed? I am going absolutely insane. Every single location I need to go is blocked by large or small enemies that can hit harder than a drunken uncle at a social gathering when you score a touchdown in a friendly game of two-hand touch football with the family. I can't go any direction. Why am I doing this? Why is this happening? I can only move an inch at a time before I die over and over again, no matter what. This honestly, truly and honestly has to be the worst start to a Terraria world that I have ever experienced in my entire existence. Well, I'll be fucked. We made it to the desert. Is that... A fucking larva? Excuse me? We decided to try our best to work on our elevator a bit more, hopefully gathering anything but hive and mud on the way, but instead just die some more. What do you guys like to do to de-stress in times of duress? One of my coping mechanisms is screaming, but not letting it out of the confines of my mouth. <laughs> We push it to the left instead of the right. It looks like we have desert on both sides of our world. This is interesting. <laughs> oh god, please have a weapon, traveling merchant. Please. This is all I ask of you. Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> Fucking trash. We've been at it for hours, but have discovered absolutely nothing except for jungle and hive, some desert, and then some more jungle and hive. Then it hits me. What solves any problem you have in real life or in Terraria? Explosives. Bombs solve everything. Problem with your car? Bomb. Problem with a person? Pipe bomb. Problem with bees infesting every nook and cranny of your Terraria world? Bombs. Our demo man moves in just in time for us to plant a firm and wet kiss right onto his forehead and buy his explosive products. This works swimmingly. Things are a shade more on the okay side now. I have discovered nothing. No accessories. No ores. I've got nothing. The pain is crippling. At least this will prepare me for the several divorces I go through within the next 17 years of my life. Always find the silver lining in things. One, and I mean one fucking misfire and three enraged queen bees spawn to take our V card. We keep blowing our way down the elevator, die a couple more times, blow our way down some more and die again. We seriously need everything. We hardly have ores, no accessories to our name, no cool weapons. We need to find everything as soon as possible and I don't even know where to start. It is simply dry season for loot. All we have are a couple blowpipes we got from above ground chests which are useless because we can't get seeds which is outrageous. This is when I realized that seeds aren't the answer but rather ripping the stingers off of the bees that have been dunking all over us and cramming them into blowpipes is the true answer. We have taken another inch long step in our 45 mile race. Progress! We have an entirely mediocre weapon, but we can now stay alive for 8 seconds and 
instead of two. A mace. I'm going to go feral. I swear to God, I'm going to lose it. This does nothing for us. Loot that actually helps. Thank God. What else do we have here? Horseshoe? Horse horseshoes are cool, I guess. I'll take it. Hey, why not, I guess. We also find that our beloved and once sacred mushroom biome is now withered away into crisp honey blocks and random specks of hive. That's depressing. It's all honeyed out. We make it to a jungle cave a bit to the right of our base, and now we're gaining all kinds of sexy loot, such as a flare. That'll help. I'm going to implode. All of our problems are solved, however, because we found the Giga Shroom Biome. A sense of normalcy is always pleasant in these trying times. We also collect a couple life crystals in our journey, which is also very pleasing. It is now a tiny bit harder for a small enemy to kill us in two shots. We swingity swang it on over to the left side of our world, which reveals something so unholy that I don't even want to look at it. A hive biome? Really? Is there already not enough bees all over the goddamn continent? We have to have a hive biome? Where's all the Instagram story reposts saying, the beehive biome, how you can help? We die at the dungeon because of a blood moon, but I can't be that mad because we actually made it further than I once would have anticipated. Speaking of progress, we actually made it to hell. I can't wait to see how horrible it is in there. Not because it's hell, but because it's bee hell. Mother of God, we need a gun. We go hit the crimson biome and are greeted by an ungodly amount of spiders. If I saw this amount of spiders in any setting in real life, I would simply piss so so hard that it tears. We get that gat, dare I say, that strap. Perhaps the tuli, as some would say. Now we can expand our house a little bit and deal with the flying pestilence called jungle bats in a fashionable manner. After we do some expanding, I see we have gravitation potions from exploring, so we take to the skies where all those winged cunts on the ground can't get us, but rather the winged sky cunts can get us instead. We got some loot though. I'm mad, but I ain't stressing. We end up making it out alive to the end of our world, but nothing. And I mean nothing could have prepared me to see what happened to our beaches. The entire fucking ocean is now honey. And the entire beach is now made of honey blocks. What has this world become? We need armor, but we can't get a ton of ores. Why not take what the land gives us? We should get some jungle armor. Not before getting assaulted by goblins rule 34 style, however. Nothing I love more than goblins at the simple most inconvenient time imaginable. Now, when I tell you we get washed, I mean we get fucking blasted by the goblin army. I have never died this much of the goblin invasion in my entire existence. I die so goddamn much it's baffling to me. Our entire world is being engulfed by a graveyard biome. I am scraping with every weapon and tool I have to make this process a bit faster but there's nothing I can do when I'm getting my own cock and balls served, bronzed, bedazzled, and gifted back to me on the holidays. If I die one more time, I'm coming back as a pecan tree so these motherfuckers can eat my nuts one last time. Ooh, you are so fucking in for it. We finally make it through and remove all the 700 graves from our own home. Finally, we can relax. Blood moon! Blood moon! <laughs> We are now on that Sigma male grind for jungle armor. We find some water walking boots which are sometimes convenient in the average Storaria experience but exponentially convenient in our own setting as now we could run on top of honey. Honey, which blankets half of our goddamn world. Full set! Ooh yeah! We aren't even magic users but holy hell we have more than three armor now. This is amazing. Speaking of Sigma male grind set, we find out we can sell packs of frogs for a decent amount. What does the merchant do with all the frogs we sell him? I don't know, and I don't imagine we'll like the answer very much either, so I simply sell the frogs and go on my way. Let's prep a bit for the Eye of Cthulhu, shall we? We build ourselves a little platform with campfires, nothing too crazy as it's just the Eye of Cthulhu. We use the revolver which we bought from a traveling merchant, and things were going quite well at first, until it didn't. When the Eye had what seemed to be one health left and we lost the battle, we lost against the Eye of Cthulhu. We actually lost against the Eye of Cthulhu. I'm going to pluck my eyebrows out and draw them back on. We need to kill that EOC as soon as humanly possible before I make another species of bird go extinct. We build some quick homes in the desert for the arms dealer and nurse to record beta cuck interracial bull wife slamming videos in, and also for the cheaper prices on the products at hand. We need that mini shark, and we will sell an ungodly amount of frogs to get it. While they're moving in, we take a quick peek into the hive biome and are immediately put onto a phase 360 no scope dubstep montage somewhere in 2011 YouTube. Anyways, now that we've been Called racial slurs on the Xbox 360 in a Call of Duty lobby, we could spend our hard earned frog bucks on a motherfucking mini shark, baby! Without a second to waste, we charge directly into battle against the Eye of Cthulhu. It should be no surprise that we are an absolute fucking menace to the Eye when we're well equipped. We offer him the opportunity to scramble like an egg, but he instead chooses to be folded like an omelet. We have the shield of Cthulhu and some crimptane to make stuff with, with the whole world at our fingertips. The next boss has to be the big brain of Cthulhu. We have absolutely no time to waste, we don't waste a second 
second on heading to the future site of our Brain Blaster arena. We decked the place out with the most simple arena. Platforms, campfires, boom, done. Hopefully, this won't need any extra help like in Further Worthy, where I was wrung out dry and tossed in the laundry by the brain. We also immediately block off all spider incest chambers in order to keep their disgusting breeding mechanisms at bay while we fight the brain. We don't want any extra mobs trying to toss us while we're already being tossed. We head back to the spawn hotel and make ourselves some jester arrows to shoot from our tendon bow, which I imagine is constantly wet to the touch on account of it being made of eyeball matter. We also visit our arms dealer between his rounds with the nurse in order to procure an unnecessary amount of ammunition for our mini shark. Having these small preparations done means we're ready to take on the brain, so we do just that. We go back to the crimson and blow up the remainder of the hearts in order to summon his ugly ass, then take right to blasting the little eyeballs with jester arrows. This part goes fairly quickly and soon enough we are onto the brain itself. We learn from our previous mistakes and pay attention to the minimap because we do not want to be tentacled any more than we're already going to be in the future. Still waiting on that waffle time rule 34 action. Haven't seen any yet. As soon as he came, he went. We win on the first try, which feels absolutely phenomenal. We head on back and expand our housing. The more NPCs we can cram into a tiny location, the better for us and the worse for them, which equates to two wins in my book. We collect our spoils and craft up a full set of crimson armor in order to have us last about three seconds in the wilderness rather than two. We also make a cool pickaxe that'll get us to the final tier of pre-hard mode ores when we see that a meteorite has landed. If you've been with me for long enough, you know precisely what this means. If you assumed it was a meteorite armor or, you know, perhaps a space gun, you need to get your thick and plump ass right back into Waffle Time 101 class because we're going to be making no such thing. Instead, we will be making the Star Cannon. That's right, this bad boy can carry us through the rest of Free Hard Mode with one little tiny speed bump in the road. The speed bump being ammunition. Good god, the amount of hours I spend collecting ammo in this run is an atrocity. It should be a fucking crime against the state and church for this matter. We quickly collect a vast amount of obsidian, make a skull with it, then collect all the juicy meteorites for a very juicy weapon. We absolutely just, we just go in and mow this shit. King Slime decided to pay us a visit upon return to Spawn Hotel, so I bend him over the nearest coffee table or office desk and show him who's boss. I make all of his little friends watch. Now that that's over with, we get bent over the nearest coffee table or office desk while the star collection segment shows us who's boss. This takes an ungodly amount of time simply collecting stars, sleeping, then collecting more stars in order to have an ample amount of ammo. Next step for us is another epic gamer mining segment, perhaps another mowing session, when we decide we need full hellstone gear. We make our full hellstone armor and head right into the dungeon to prepare for the bone master. Little did we know, we would be the ones getting boned after all. We make a typical arena, typical buffs, typical everything for what we thought was going to be a typical boss. We're stacked after all, right? Nothing could go wrong, right? Wrong! We get boned! Hard! At the very last second too, this boner couldn't even have the decency to bring us to slaughter at the halfway point, but rather waited until the very end. So many goddamn stars wasted. I'm going to lose it. Everything I do in this godforsaken land is a trial and tribulation. We decide to relocate some of our NPCs to different biomes in order to get easier access to the world. This makes us feel just a little tiny bit better. We spend the next hour or so collecting more stars that we lost during the battle, which makes us feel a lot worse. It's all about balance in life. After that, we head down to our goblin tinkerer, also known as the goblin stinkerer, and reforge some of our items and accessories until we're so poor we can't even buy food for ourselves, let alone afford rent. My landlord's at my door as we speak. I'm pretending I'm not home. We have more important things to do, such as reenact the previous scene with Skeletron and get our revenge. Stars. Stars. It's time for our revenge. We march our arrogant yet happy asses back over to our former arena turned gravesite and summon his bony ass up again. Everything is going swimmingly. We run and gun as much as humanly possible. All this time I'm waiting for something horrible to happen, such as maybe a fallen star turning evil and one-shotting me. Perhaps Skeletron realizing he has opposable thumbs and can operate heavy machinery against me. But to my surprise, nothing terrible happens, and we end up boning Skeletron for a change. This is refreshing. I feel pretty good about this. I feel a tad bit better than I did before but still feeling as if I'm in a constant state of sleep paralysis. We traverse the dungeon, meaning we try our fucking best to survive in hopes of getting some juicy loot. We end up finding the mechanic, which is mediocre to say the least, and end up going back home to put her in goblin prison with the tinkerer. You all know what happens next. This is when we accidentally summon the queen bee. Now, traditionally, when you accidentally summon the queen pea, you die nearly instantaneously or accidentally enrage her. In this case, however, we are already drastically equipped. We have stars left over from our battle with Skeletron and go down our rope to an open arena. We dodge the best we can, which is quite horribly, but we do so much fucking damage we actually managed to pull through. Much like myself and many of you youngins out there, this was a very happy accident, and I couldn't be more pleased about it. That makes the Wall of Flesh the final battle of pre-hard mode for us. As much as I'd love to go down there and cook up some Wall of Flesh filet, we have some preparations to tend to. We get off to a great start by trying to find the golfer NPC, and dying almost instantly. What do I expect anymore? 
Why do I bother? We completely neglect that idea and hunt for more stars. This hurts me a lot, as it's not difficult, but just tedious and takes a lot of time. We will need an overzealous amount of stars because I do not want to run out while fighting the wall, die, then have to collect even more. I will lose it. I will actually lose it. We craft up shady and potentially illegal plant growing stations so that we can make some surely illegal sports performance enhancement concoctions. We do a bit more adventuring to collect more life crystals and loot, then head to the dungeon to find the cobalt shield so we don't take a ridiculous amount of knockback constantly. I get a mirror Masa, a stupid fucking yo-yo, a magic missile, this is ridiculous, all I want is a cobalt shield, another stupid fucking yo-yo, a blue moon, an actual fucking gun, another magic missile, finally, my god, how much, how much does it take? Anyways, I reforge all the remainder of my items in order to be as decked out as possible for the wall, meaning spend all the money we have until we're in crippling debt again, no worries, the goblin stinkerer takes credit, we will not pay a dime of this off. We go down to fix up hell, which we find isn't infested with honey or honey blocks, but rather is infested with larvae in every single demon frat boy dorm room that exists. This whole map is a nightmare. We take to blowing up all the demon home we can with no regard to how much they're gonna have to pay in repairs down the road, or even if they have insurance for that matter, because a tremendous sentient flesh wall with eyes and a mouth is going to come barreling through our china shop very soon. We have our buffs, our smooth sailing runway for the wall, potions, reforged accessories and weapons. I think it's safe to say that it's clobberin' time, milady. We throw the voodoo all in and immediately start gunning with every bit of power we have left in our body. To my surprise, this was much easier than I thought. Perhaps because I was drastically overprepared, but still it went quite well. We end up washing the waffle of flesh, making a nice cut of wall of flesh steak. Grilled to medium rare perfection. Speaking of which, if you eat blue rare steak, you'd save a lot of time and money if you simply walked up to the cow and took a bite out of it. You're a psychopath, an absolute lunatic, whoever eats blue rares on a watch list somewhere. What are you, a fucking werewolf? I digress. We waste no time in sprinting directly to the crimson and laying the pipe on all the crimson altars we can find. The wraiths, however, have other plans for me. They want to take my soul out and add it to their own terrarian soul jar collection and try and pick up girls with reddit karma while we watch from their shelf. We run as fast as our tiny little bite sized legs will take us and get out of dodge immediately after pummeling some more altars. We also make good use of Cloud's buster sword which strangely enough comes from the wall of flesh. After all that star grinding, it's time for a different kind of grind. Or grind. We spend many hours collecting a ton of ores and upgrading to the next tier of pickaxes. Many hours, I say, because we die every time we walk five feet again. We've come full circle. We were momentarily at the top of the world and are now the smallest fish in the pond yet again. Ha, ah, the wonders of life. I'm gonna take this out on my kids in the future. Welcome to hard mode, motherfucker. The titanium grind is rigorous. Not only are we dying every 10 seconds because the hard mode enemies are all BTS stands and no BTS isn't our favorite band, but also because titanium is much like our fathers after they go out for milk once when we're kids. It's simply nowhere to be found. Several more hours of grind later and we have ourselves a full set of titanium armor. We're slowly working our way back up the ladder to the doesn't die in one hit crew. But boy, is it taking some time. We also find the wizard. Wow, useless. It's time to make some good use of our new armor and prepare ourselves a auto crypto miner and NFT purchaser. In other words, make a big mob grinder that'll hopefully give us some cash money moolah. I say now, while you're watching the work at hand, this was the single most painful experience of my entire life. I don't think I have died more working on one single project than I have in the entirety of my Terraria experience. We go down, place some blocks, die. Go down, mine some blocks, die. It's an endless cycle of misfortune. I am far too weak to save myself. Everything is so much goddamn stronger than me. It doesn't matter what I do, what armor I wear, what titties I suck, I get clapped in two to three hits, no matter what. There is a hyper graveyard biome now, which means even more enemies, thank goodness. Surely there weren't enough of those. You know what? All I hear about is this left wing, right wing. I just want to build. As usual, we start with the vertical and horizontal border of this farm, getting a good outline going that'll act as the confines of our farm. The constant torrential downpour of honey serves as another big fucking problem I have to deal with. I hate this world so goddamn much. We make the mistake of putting our lava down at the bottom, and now we have to protect it from honey that's constantly spilling out of every single orifice of every single block that exists. At long last, we finish hollowing out the bottom section of our farm. As you can see, there's no walls where traditionally there was. That's right. After building about a hundred of these things, I found that you can simply put lava at the bottom of the farm and nothing spawns as long as there's no walls. Anyways, we work on our lava pyramid trip and surprise to die about 300 more times. We finally scrape by and hollow out the top portion thanks to our use of explosives and hook up the dart traps to activate any idling mimics. We are finished! 
for the most part. We can AFK here anytime we like and get all kinds of money and succulent little slices of loot. God, this feels good. We AFK and get some juicy loot. We take the bountiful harvest of souls of light we obtain from AFKing, somehow turn them into solid keys, then stuff them into a chest and try to battle the Turbo Mimics. We are going after that Daedalus Stormbow in order to take on the Destroyer. It takes some time, naturally, but we manage to snag one. We also get ourselves a lot of potions as well. What do you guys think health and mana potions taste like? I'm under the impression that mana potions taste like blue raspberry slurpees from 7-Eleven, while health potions taste like cough syrup. I don't know why. That's just the way it is. I'm just a messenger. Don't get mad at me. I don't make the rules. Enjoy your cough syrup. Next up, we get the horns from a bunch of unicorns to grind into boner pills. Not for us, though. I mean, like, for our friends. They have wee-wee problems. We don't. Right, guys? Not us. Ha ha ha. We also use them for holy arrows, which really won't be helpful with our erectile dis- I, I mean, our friend's erectile dysfunction, but it'll help for manhandling the destroyer, which we care about more than anyone's boners right now. We go ahead and grab the leaf wings from a witch doctor, which we should have done immediately. So helpful. So helpful. The fuck is a super star shooter? Why have I never used this before? We make it, naturally, and reforge all of our items to take on the destroyer. We now have holy arrows and decide to spit in the mouths of some mimics. Not in a sexy and dominant way, but rather to insult them. I think they enjoy it, however, which is very disgruntling because they just fold over and die quite quickly. It's destroyer time, baby. We make a sky platform. Get it? Because of clouds? Clouds are in the sky. <laughs> Get it? You guys can laugh now if you'd like to. I don't mind. I'll wait. I am immediately heckled by a wyvern who said some deplorable and racial remarks to us online. Their smug look resembles exactly how they feel about it as well. Wyverns deserve less. We're all stocked up on potions and ammo, so I think we're ready to battle. We go ahead and get some sleep until it's nighttime, then run right up to our platform and engage in battle. We completely blast the destroyer thanks to Terraria History's greatest destroyer destroyer of a technique. Even after the great nerf of 1.4, this method still is one of the most viable strategies to melt the destroyer down into scrap metal, then make phallic objects out of him to sell at a strange section of the all in the back of a random and edgy shop. We don't just get the scrap metal for phallic objects, however, we also get some dev items such as some cool wings, a cool fit, and red throw, which may just be the coolest fucking yo-yo of all time. I'm running over to the beast to do some illegal shark hunting, then it hits me. How exactly do I attend on illegally hunting for sharks when there's no such thing as honey sharks? Sharks cannot spawn in honey. What in God's name am I to do? Am I expected to just move on without our beloved mega shark? It just, it doesn't feel right. I still accidentally make him a plate of food for dinner. Then one of my close friends has to tell me, you made him a plate again. Into which I respond by going, oh. And then dropping my silverware and breaking down at the kitchen table. We take our minds off this tragic loss by building an asphalt bridge for the twins. What better way to get past our pain than inflicting unnecessary pain onto others? Apparently pirates got the memo, because they came onto my land and spread so much disease that there's more dead bodies than standing ones. God, I hate the pirates so much. I swear to God, it's it's in their AI somewhere to spawn at the most inconvenient time imaginable. Then again, I think any time for pirates to spawn is greatly inconvenient. We do the traditional die and kill a couple pirates then die again method, and it works quite well. After that conundrum is dealt with, we make a crimson platform in our farm in order to get some juicy ichor. With this, we'll make some flasks and try to take the twins head on. We take to the skies and dive right into battle. It's slow and steady, as I'm using a stupid fucking flying knife and occasionally the world's coolest yo-yo, but we manage to do a decent amount of damage. We take out spasmatism first, then its younger brother retinades are next. We wipe our hands clean of this sin, then go back down to our spawn hotel to sort through our loot. There's one menace left of the mechanical bunch and that's Skeletron Prime, my least favorite entity in existence. I wish nothing but pain and agony for Prime and his family for that matter. I don't care if they have anything to do with his antics or not. I want him to feel lost before we put him down. We're on a great note. The last several bosses we battled have been slaughtered on our first attempt. What do you guys think? You guys think we'll keep the ball rolling? You guys think we've earned the right to feel again in a land made of fucking bees? If you thought, no, Waffle Time, why do you get excited about anything? Your dreams will be crushed as quickly as you can manage to think of them. Then boy, were you right. We get fucking folded without putting so much of a dent into Prime's foreskin. We try using the Gatligator, which we got from a traveling merchant to no avail at all. It did nothing. We get nothing. I hate Skeletron Prime more than anything in the entire world. This is when I remember our little super star shooter in our back pocket. You know what that means? Star collection duty! Okay, so this is where something really funny happens. I use the super star shooter and actually beat him. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm filled with joy. What's the catch, right? There has to be a catch. I go down to OBS and see we weren't recording. Not a second of that fight as evidence exists in this world. So, as much as I'd absolutely love to just say I did it and march forward, none of you little rascals would ever believe me. So what do I do? Go on double overtime star collection duty and start all over again. I, I love my life so much. We go into battle. 
again and grind our teeth down into a fine powder the entire time. The Super Star Shooter is actually a screamer of a weapon and I love it dearly. I do not love the means of acquiring its ammo, however. Having that said, it's officially gotten us through my least favorite boss in the entire world twice, so I can't be too mad at it. That's over with. Thank fucking god that's over with. We can move forward. We can make strides. I want to chew on aluminum foil because of this incident. All three mechs are down, so what's next for Waffle Time and his sexy little viewers? We make the mechanical cart and an Avenger Emblem for some more damage, of course, as well as a new pickaxe which will let us take out the natural resources of the land for our own personal wealth, despite what happens to the people living on that land or the animals for that matter. It's all about the money, baby. Any other ideas we should start on you guys? Surely nothing will spring out of the blue and be a tremendous inconvenience to us making any sort of progress, so now's the time to submit any answers. Oh, sorry kids, time's up. Daddy's gonna get all of his bones shattered, so no time for anything more than internal and external despair. By some divine miracle, between getting filleted, we kill a reaper and actually get its kick-ass death sickle. I am extraordinarily surprised by this because nothing has come this easy so far. We take it and run with it. Why ask questions? We reforge it, then move forward to our trusty crypto miner in order to replace all crimson blocks with mud. We need shells for turtle armor, so we AFK for what seems to be four purgatory sentences to get the shells. Eventually, though, our grass spreads enough for us to get a decent flow of turtles, and we procure a sufficient enough amount of turtle shells to make some epic armor. Now we have to get the chlorophyte, which is not too much of a grind, but we drink some spelunker potions, which I imagine tastes like very bitter lemonade, and go right into the mud to get as much as we can. We are Sigma males. Why waste time on trivial things, such as trying to get a girlfriend when we could be mining chlorophyte? We swing back to the crib in order to craft up our armor and go on to make the full set. The turtle armor does grow our caucus an exponential amount, but it's nowhere near the size and girth of Adrian's massive horse meat ding dong. After realizing we'll never achieve the weight of that dong no matter what armor we're wearing, we take it out on Queen Bee, as we rightfully should. How's it feel, Queen Pea, to be the runt? How does it feel to be the one scared? Ah, that felt good. I feel slightly better about my own insecurity simply by taking my anger out on someone else. We hunt for some life roots because Plantera's thick and, no pun intended, succulent ass is next on our boss piping list. We see a bulb spawn in our farm. We know we have no chance. We go fuck it mode anyways and summon her. We die. That's the end of that. There's nothing cool, sexy, or interesting that came out of this conundrum. We simply die. Anyways, we find a new and far more efficient bulb and begin to make our arena around it. We make a tall arena with spaced out platforms, though contrary to previous long-winded episodes of Terraria videos, I do not fill in the entire background with walls. We have done nothing but grind. We will not do it anymore so long as we can help it. Or so we thought. We then explode our way down to hell, creating what I like to call our- Oh shit. Oh god. Oh fuck. Tunnel. There's honey in every single orifice of my body and I don't like it one bit. I never thought I'd see the day where honey made me feel like I was watching myself get beaten to death in the third person. While we go grab our potions, here's one of our discussion topics of the day. If Plantera was getting ready to attack you and said, look, you're underprepared, you're gonna die here, I'll make you a deal. If you can successfully lay pipe, then I'll give you my loot and let you go free. But if you fail, I kill you. Do you think you'd do it? Like, do you think you could do it? Like, like you're gonna get killed if you don't. Like, do you die with dignity or die as a man or woman who laid pipe on Plantera? I would do it. I don't care, I'd do it. What's your thoughts? Anyways, we head down to the battle arena and bully several queen peas in order to regain our fragile masculinity, then head into the arena itself. We summon her, and all is going decently enough until she bursts into her second phase. Unfortunately, Plantera did not see me fit to lay pipe and instead slaughtered me on the spot. The problem was that I was at the tippy top of our arena when she went into her second phase, giving us little to no chance of getting to the oh shit oh god oh fuck tunnel. We are very upset very upset. We AFK at our farm for a while in order to have more bulbs spawn across the world. We dash in after quite some time, find another bulb, and start the next battle. This time, however, I used a chlorophyte shot bow with holy arrows, which as many of you already know, fucks extensively. We start the battle with the death sickle, then when she goes sicko mode and tramples everyone at the concert in her path, we go to our tunnel and use the shot bow, raining holy hellfire on Plantera. Clearly, she doesn't have an umbrella, because we bring her to the slaughterhouse and toss her salad to no end. Without even skipping a beat, we open her treasure bag, get useless loot we aren't going to ever use, grab the key and make a mad dash for the temple in order to bully Gollum. God, I love bullying Gollum. We bust into their frat rooms, throw away all their backwards caps and beer pong champion tank tops, which they do not take kindly to one bit. We also rummage through every chest we can find, grabbing power cells among all their frat boy belongings. It gets tedious, tossing phallic objects, watered down liquor, and four dollar retro sunglasses aside, but we get right through it. Soon enough, we're in the frat master's bedroom, and we prepare to take him down. We make a ridiculously simple platform with some buffs on top of it 
it and summon him right up. We use the chlorophyte shot bow to gun him down while he makes borderline racial remarks as well as calling us dude and geed constantly. We don't listen to a word that comes out of his mouth and keep shooting. We bob, weave, duck, dip, dive, dodge, and soon enough, take him out. A looming silence overcomes the lizard campus as there's no longer the smell of cheap liquor and the sound of yelling and loud god-awful music coming from the apartments near campus. We do the world a favor and bully him again. We take the components of his treasure and make beetle armor out of it. I am very excited as this is the last set of armor we'll use until we battle the Moon Lord. One more step closer to being out of bee hell. We're at the prime of our lives when the Martians invade and take our wife on a business meeting with them. Only God knows why she isn't answering her phone. The Martians are a fucking nightmare. I can't go one second without being killed, let alone exploded, eviscerated, lightning zapped, and simply bludgeoned to death. We do not stand a shred of a chance at this moment and are extra annoyed because we didn't even mean to have them show up. We don't need any loot from them. We don't like them. They are a goddamn pestilence to this world. Saucers are a fucking nightmare as well. I can't even get close to beating one. And every time I die to one, I get sent back to spawn and get killed by another. Every time a saucer kills me, it makes me miss 1.3 a little bit more when you could simply hide in a box and manhandle any boss, including these oversized bastards. Eventually, we kill enough aliens to get by and can move on with our lives, but not before dismantling the 782 grave markers that now plague our world because of this waffle time genocide. In order to regain any sense of pride we once had, we revamp our farm to a crimson biome in order to get a crimson key. Because what's better for making bosses feel like tiny babies than the Abortionator 9000? That's right, we want the vampire knives in order to completely cheese the cultist, as well as die a thousand more times to the pillars with. We get the key, snag the those knives, then go right for the cultist. The cultist didn't do anything wrong, we just wanted to feel pain. We want him to feel what we've been feeling for the entirety of this playthrough. Despair. We do just that. We dodge and weave, float like a bee, sting like a bee, like Muhammad all bee. Everything is bees. This is a nightmare and I would like to be done now. Having that said, we're one step closer to the Moon Lord, as we've manhandled the cultist. That was fun. That felt pretty good for us. It's every Terrarian's favorite time. Pillar time! We have been so excited for this moment. There's nothing more that I love more than just, you know, feeling on top of the world from beating the cultist than immediately getting my soul crushed from otherworldly beasts and creatures. We start with the Stardust Pillar as it's very easy to cheese. I fucking love it. I love blasting orbs and getting tiny orbs and watching them turn into big orbs and blasting those orbs. Orb burst. We then craft up the Stardust Dragon which will have our wife whenever he likes but in return we get cool stuff. Nintendo Switch, Pokemon games, that's a fair trade. We do the classic solar pillar method next which I like to call hide like a bitch and let Chad Cock McStar Dragon take care of the work. If you don't know this method, we simply hide like a bitch and let Chad Cock McStar Dragon take care of the work. Simple method, we only die a lot. A lot. I am in so much pain. Up next we have the Vortex Pillar which we also cheese by hiding like a bitch but not that much of a bitch because we're now doing a fair amount of damage compared to what we were doing before as we crafted up solar weapons. Women will only like us for the value of our weaponry with no attention or love for us as human beings. You know who I love for the value of his weaponry and with attention and love for him as a human being? Adrian. God, I love Adrian. Next up is our favorite pillar, the Nebula Pillar. We die continuously and repeatedly. We're back at the point of where we're watching the death counter screen more than we're actually playing the goddamn motherfucking game. Eventually, we see one of these Twitter activist Nebula creatures post a share and like this post if you aren't racist and support the Nebula Creature Association. We immediately scroll past it. This in turn makes them so unfathomably angry that they type so hard and viciously on a Twitter reply that they eventually wear themselves out and we take the epic gamer Victory Royale. Victory Royale? Uh oh kids, Waffle Time's Terraria spawn base is in trouble. He needs your help to defeat that wacky moon lord. In order to do this, he needs a fork knife battle pass, a chug jug, and a gold scar. To help him, all he needs is your parents' credit card information, so make sure to put in those numbers on the front, the expiration month and day, and those funky three digits on the back that's called a security code. Quick! He needs your help. Anyways, all fork knife jokes aside, we take on the Moon Lord on asphalt with no rod of discord and do surprisingly well? We didn't have a nurse to heal, no buffs, no rod of dick sword, and you still got surprisingly far. You know what? I feel like the fucking man right now. We're gonna beat the Moon Lord using this exact method. We're just gonna use asphalt and beat his ass this way. We can do it. Look how far we got. What can go wrong? We prepare for battle by collecting more chlorophyte for bullets. After that, we go ahead and make a whore box. I mean a whore box. I, I mean, sorry. I mean a whore box. Whore box. I mean a nurse box so that we can heal. Everything is an epic gamer dub until my nurse decides she's better than the problem at hand, you know? She at one point decided Hey, you know what? I don't care that the entire world's about to be eaten by a fucking moon squid. I'm taking a hike. We teleport back in desperate need of a heal and see she's just walked off on her own. 
Fuck us, right? Fuck us. Fuck my life. Holy shit. Why? I am furious. You know what this means, you little rascals? You know what this means? We get the honor of doing all the pillars all over again. Now this is quality gameplay. So much fun. So much. I'm having fun. We take what feels to be 19 years and some change to take out the pillars again, one by one by one by one. We fucking die to the moon lord again. You know what? F fuck this. Fuck the- why do I even bother doing anything new? You know, the old strat works. Why'd we stray away from it? That's what we get. We should not try anything new or try to expand any horizons in life. We'll simply catch truffle worms and work a nine to five Monday through Saturday with one day off to be alone with our thoughts. Who knows what sort of wacky things will happen. We head right over to our honey infested ocean. Our honey ocean. Our ocean. Our oce oceany bussy. We head right over to the bussy and fish Dick Pissman right out of the water. Unlike in our further worthy run, we absolutely manhandle Dick Pissman with our endgame gear. We throw him down on the ground, let out a snarl to assert our alpha male sex dominance, which sounds a little something like we beat him. We beat Duke Fishrin. That's all. I'm imploding. We ramp up our farm in order to get that rod of discord. Forget we can't have player placed walls behind us in order for chaos elementals to spawn and grind for even longer. Tiny mistakes like these are the ones that are the most taxing on us permanently. A crucial next step for us is blocking in this stupid imbecilic little hemorrhoid of a nurse. We wait until it's raining as per the demands of our usual strategy, then use a sigil to summon the moon lord up for potentially the last time. We ride our cute fisherman into the abysmal chasm of the night sky. We ride on fish back with our vortex beater, ass blaster 9000, and fling exploding projectiles into his various eyeballs. That's right, I took you for a spin on that one. Our chlorified bullets tear this thick slice of slender calamari bit for bit, ass cheeks out, doom slayer style. He stands no chance against our thick, oiled, bouncing ass cheeks. God, I love ass so much. I want to dive straight into it. I mean, pff, give me a fucking snorkel and lather me up. I mean, uh, uh, chlorified bullets. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I think someone hacked my microphone briefly. So embarrassing. That never happens. Yep, I'm a certified ass man. Anyways, we're tearing this clown up. He stands no chance, and in little to no time at all, we're gunning straight for his heart. We teleport back when needed and eventually deep fry him into a tasty squid dish. Squid game reference? Fucking kill me. Spare me. This Terraria experience has driven me off the goddamn edge. Words just can't describe what my brain is feeling right now, and then suddenly relief. The sky's clear. The dense and ass-sweat filled jungle reappears in its entirety. That's it. We've actually done it. The nightmare is over. If there's one thing I've learned about this seed, it's that Nicolas Cage had it right all along. Not the bees. You know what I mean? They were in my eyes. They were in my eyes. The worst part of this entire experience had to be the beginning, where I could not mind walk, breathe, eat, sleep, or shit. But I think back again to the rest of the entirety of the playthrough where I also could not mind breathe, eat, or shit. And I finally remembered that it's all a nightmare. All of it. Every bit of this seed is a nightmare. I'm just glad we never have to do this seed ever again, and we can move on to different, horrendous playthroughs of other games, or even more challenging Terraria videos to make me pull my hair out. Having all that said and done, this challenge is now complete. This world is complete, wrapped, hand stamp, and delivered straight to the cursed videos folder. Thank you all so much for accompanying me on this painful journey in conquering the Not the Bees seed. It was certainly a battle, but we got through it in the end. This video did take a very, very long time to make, so if you did enjoy it, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content like this, as well as leave a comment and share to show your support. Thank you all very, very, very much again for joining me on this journey. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you little sexy rascals on the flip side. See ya!